the Lord was just laid it on my heart very, very strongly to reread the book of Nehemiah. In reading this book, there are five demonic strategies, five tactics that work against men and women of God. Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king, right? And he was an entrusted individual that had that God raised up and put him in this very important position. He would bring the wine to the king, but he would have to first taste it to make sure that it was good, right? That it wasn't going to be poisonous, right? So if anybody was going to die, it would have been Nehemiah, right? So the king would be held safe because this man was entrusted to, to do this job, be a cupbearer, right? And so Nehemiah, though, was in Persia. And so the story, when you read through it, you see that he's in Persia and he is, he is serving this this Persian king, but back home, back home in Jerusalem, the walls of their city was, they were torn down. The walls were destroyed and the gates were burned with fire. So they were in a mess. If your walls are torn down and if your gates are burned with fire, then you know that there is all kinds of access to demonic activity because your walls are down. There's no protection. In this, in this spiritual realm, but also in the natural. There is literally no protection. So word was sent to, ne to Nehemiah that, hey, you're over here, you're serving the king, that's all great and everything, but your people are suffering. The city, the whole town, you know, it's, it's, it's a mess. So he went at night to go and view and to make sure this is truly the right report. He found out that it was, and it grieved his heart. It grieved his heart so much to the point to where the king noticed that he was grieving. And when the king noticed he was grieving, which is actually a dangerous thing to do, so he needed to go before the king and he needed to bring the wine before, to the king, but he couldn't do so in any form of sorrow or sadness because doing that could have been punishable by death. So, but he couldn't help himself because he was that grieved. So he went, to the, he went before the king and the king noticed he was sad. He was grieved. He said, you've never been like this before. What is going on? Something is wrong here. And so he told him, he says, my people, like my land, you know, it's a mess. The walls are torn down. The gates are burned with fire. He says, what is your request? He gave him his request to go back. Yeah. And he also gave him the provision to go back, right? He gave him for letters so he can travel safely in the forest, back to the forest, through the river. He gave him, um, he, he, he also had another letter that he could have the wood, the timber, so that he can go and rebuild. So he provided everything that he needed, right? So we start this, this story here, and we see that he was a courageous leader, Nehemiah, a courageous leader. And although the, the walls were broken down, the gates were burned with fire, Nehemiah was the man that God chose to do the rebuilding, and I believe that God is doing the very same thing in your lives and our lives to, to actually bring about the rebuilding. And so rebuilding may look a little different for some of us. Like it may look somewhat different in your life than in your life, but God is rebuilding. And he wants to use you to rebuild. Now, for some, it's re relationships, right? For some, the rebuilding is unto relationships. For some, the rebuilding is a, is a health thing. For some, it's, it's a financial thing. It could be many, many other scenarios, but I'm just throwing out a few. But God is rebuilding, and he is using you. He wants to use you. He wants to use you as a vessel that rebuilds, right? According to the will of God. So, but there are some things we need to be aware of, some demonic strategies and some demonic tactics that do come against a leader that is, has said, yes, Lord, send me, use me, choose me. I want to serve you, right? Then there are some demonic tactics that come against you. And in this book, there's about five that are listed. Obviously, we know that there are a lot of, so many, many other tactics that can come against you. But I want to point out the five that I see in this book. First of all, two demonic spirits, two demonic spirits, they rose up. And I want you to turn your Bible to Nehemiah 2 in verse 10. In verse 10, we see Sanballat and we see Tobiah. They were deeply disturbed that a man had come, Nehemiah, to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. Nehemiah, so Sanballat and Tobiah. 
Sanballat. These are two demonic spirits that rose up. Sanballat was the primary an enemy, and his name means sin, and his name means strength. But it's a demonic strength. So when you see the word Sanballat, and when you see the word Tobiah, knowing that Sanballat was the primary enemy, uh, it means demonic strength being risen against an individual. So demonic strength literally rose up against Nehemiah as he was wanting to go and help God's people and rebuild the walls. Now, the devil only resists those who are being used by God. Is that not true? He resists those that are being used by God. And so Nehemiah went at night to go and check. The, like I said, he went at night. He went to go view the opposition. He went to go view the condition of Jerusalem. And he went with just a few men. He didn't go and tell everybody there is wisdom in this church. He didn't go and tell everybody there is wisdom in only sharing what the Lord has told you to, to do and what he's told you to share. So sometimes oversharing can lead to spiritual defeat. But he had wisdom, and he shared what he knew to share and not anything more. And he only shared it with a few men. They went, they saw, and when they saw the destruction, they agreed. They agreed to work together to bring and to rebuild. They, they agreed to put their hand to work together, right? So then when we see, we see Sanballat, we see Tobiah, and we see one more, Geshem. They heard of this, and I want you to look at verse 19. When Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, when they heard of it, what did they hear? They heard that they have made a plan to work together to rebuild. Just a few men, but they heard about it. Demon spirits hear you too, right? Okay. What, what did they do when they heard about it? They laughed. Are you, guys, are you guys reading the same book? Yeah. They laughed and they despised us. And they said, what is this thing you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So right there, that kind of laughter is called mockery. It's called mockery. And so the very first tactic, that a demonic tactic, when you're doing the will of God, is mockery. A demonic strength rises up against you to bring mockery, to bring ridicule, and to bring lies. That was the first demonic strength that came against Nehemiah when he purposed himself and the men purposed themselves in the rebuilding. Mockery. If they can get you at this low level, they've got you. Don't fall for mockery. It's pride at the root. And I've already shared that with you in a, in a previous message, how the root of mockery is pride, and it's in Proverbs. But mockery, a, a, a laughing spirit where it's like pride. It's I'm better than you. Ha ha, I know what you're doing. I can't, you're not going to get away with this. It's, it is a demonic strength, and it's, it's, it's sent to stop the work of God. So they accuse them of rebelling against the king. They didn't rebel. He didn't rebel against the king. He had permission. He had letters. He had quite a few of them, right? But, you know, that's those, that demonic spirit's not going to listen to that. Instead, it's going to argue with the truth and tell you a lie because it's hoping you'll believe it. But we're not going to believe that lie, are we? No. So when you read chapter 3, you see how Nehemiah was an incredible leader and how he was able to uh, gather 40 groups uh, of people to work simultaneously on reconstructing the wall. So it's all full of just, you know, the uh, strategies that the Lord gave him. And so in, in 312, we see this great leader, Nehemiah, successfully mobilized groups to work faithfully on the north, south, east, and west of that building to restore, to restore what was destroyed. And some of you would be wise to, the, to do the very same thing and to go to your homes and the places where you live and to literally go to the north, south, east, and west and to do a prayer walk Amen. and to walk around your place and to pray and to anoint it and to allow that the spirit of the living God is taken residence and any demon spirit has to go and you anoint those walls with the oil and you decree this is God's territory and you do this as however long you have to do this but some of you need to claim back your homes Amen. your territory that God has given you so in this case he put north, south, east, west he put men stationed there to pray Amen. right? and they did so 
because he's a great leader. He, is, he, was, he was a great leader. And so in, when you look at chapter 4 and verse 7 through 9, we see here that the walls were, were starting to be restored. The gaps were starting to close. It was working. They were stationed there to pray. They were stationed there to work. And we see that the gaps were closing, right? But not only did they see it, but Sanballat, Tobiah, and all the enemies, they saw it too. And they were angry. Why? Because their mockery didn't work. So what did they do? They sent the second tactic. Do you know what the second tactic is? Look at 4 verse 8. They conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and to create confusion. The second tactic of a demonic strength that comes against you is this plotting to bring forth confusion. When you feel so confused and you know you're doing the will of God and yet there's all confusion all about you, you know there's a demonic strength. There's a sand ballot spirit that has risen up against you. It's demonic strength and it's confusion and you need to not fall for it. Command that thing to go. It doesn't come from God. So while the enemy continued to, can he continued to threaten God's people, God gave strategy to overcome. And that's Again, he strategically positioned these people, actually men and even daughters. In verse 14 of chapter 4, it says even, he says, he says he even put the sons and daughters, he, he positioned people all around. Let me see if I have the right reference there. 414. And I looked and I rose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight. Here it is, for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wife, wives and your houses, he says, to fight. And that there's another one that's going to come and it's going to tell us even the females. And we're going to get there in a moment. But so he's saying, I want you to fight. He said, I want you to fight for them. Be, you are being positioned strategically so that you fight for them, right? So he did this. Because that spirit of confusion was, was what? Trying to come against God's people. Now, let's jump over to chapter 6. They sent a message to distract and try to stop the work of God. And in the way, what did they say? They said, come, let us meet together in the villages in the, in the plain of Ono. You guys remember this? Chapter 6, verses 1. I want to read this, verse 1 through 3. And it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, and the rest of the enemies... When they heard that I had rebuilt the wall. So you see the progress. Some of you see the progress and you're like, my goodness, when is this going to ever end? When is the warfare going to end? When is all this retaliation going to end? You see the victories. You see the, the increase. You see the, you know, uh, how God has helped you. But you're like, when is this going to end? Look at this. He rebuilt the wall. It was being rebuilt. He rebuilt the wall that there were no breaks left in them, although at that time he had not Yet he had not hung the doors yet in the gates. So it wasn't fully finished, was it, the project? So it takes time. And so, but they were in this place, right, where they had, you can see the walls, right? And so, but the enemy doesn't care that you've had so much victory. He still sends his assignments, right? So we see in verse 2, they, Sanballat, Geshem, sent to me saying, come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. They didn't say anything. He said, let's, let's, let's come and meet together in the, in, the, in the village, in the land of Ono. But Nehemiah knew, based on discernment, uh, no. You meant this for evil. Discernment, which I just recently preached a message on, discernment versus discerning of spirits, right? You have to know that when the words that are spoken don't line up with the spirit that was just released. You need to know that you know what's really taking place, right? Because that, that was a lying spirit, right? So he says, oh, no, we're not going to that land of oh, no. Oh, no, right? So let's, let's look at the rest. He says, come, let us meet together among the village, uh, villages to the plain of Ono. Oh, but he thought to himself, no, you guys mean this for harm. So look at verse 3. So I sent messengers to them saying, I love it. He just sent messengers. He says, I am doing the work, a great work, so that I cannot come down. Some of you would do yourself a favor if you stop entertaining everything that comes your way and send a messenger to say no. No. He didn't even bother telling him. He said, I'm sending a messenger to say, no, I can't come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Why? 
Okay, well, they weren't too happy with that response, were they? They weren't too happy, so they, send, they said it four more times. Well, what is that all about? Well, number one, it was what, what was, if you, if you missed it, the demonic tactic of number three, the third demonic tactic that rises up against you is distractions. This is a distraction, church. A distraction or a delay. It's the same thing, right? A distraction or a delay from your God assignment. It's always being sent constantly. And then what happens is that people take the bait and they wonder, wow, what happened? Well, you took a distraction. You picked it up. You went for it. No, we're going to kick, kick that thing out and say, oh, that was a distraction. I need, to, I need to go back to what God told me to do. I'm not going. We got to close up the wall. We got to close up that wall, right? And so four times they sent Nehemiah the very same message. How persistent were they? Very. So how persistent should we be? Very, right? So four times, the same exact message, right? And it just didn't work. And then the fifth time, they sent a letter. Wow, you think like four messages, but now you send a letter. Look at 6, 6, um, Nehemiah 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 6. He, he sends a letter this time, and he says, it's reported among the nations, and Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Right there, what is that? An accusation. This is slander. This is name calling, right? Why? Because they're wanting to prevent this man from doing the will of God. All kinds of tactics that are constantly being thrown our way, but yet, but God. Come on, somebody say, but God. That was tactic number four. But the, the, the fifth one has always just like, you know, in my mind, I don't know, it's just, I'm like just appalled by this fifth tactic and have always been every time i have read this look at chapter 6 and verse 12 then i perceived that god had not sent him at all but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because tobiah and sanballat had hired him hired him for this reason he was hired that i should be afraid and act in the way of sin, so that they may have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. Number five, there was a person that was hired to intimidate Nehemiah from following through on the will of God. Is that not the lowest of the lows? You can't do it. You've tried and tried and tried. You can't do it. So now you're going to go and hire somebody to release a spirit of intimidation. I'll tell you right now, hired or not, when a spirit of intimidation is released against you, it has one reason. It has one purpose, and that is to shut you up. It is to stop you from finishing the will of God and fulfilling it. Don't you let a spirit of intimidation intimidation shut your mouth when God says speak you need to speak and you need to realize that spirit doesn't come from my God that spirit comes from the pit and it's meant to rob me it's meant to rob you it's meant to silence you you know you know you should say something but you don't have the courage to say it or sometimes you know you should be thinking you know in your mind like what happened there's such a spirit of confusion even though you know I should be responding right now you can't because the spirit of confusion and the spirit of intimidation are working together against you how many of you know what I'm talking about how many of you guys have seriously have have experienced what I'm talking about spirit of intimidation spirit of confusion just about all of you, yeah. And so, can you, isn't this horrible? Like he hired somebody. Well, people do that nowadays too. They go to a psychic. They go to somebody to go and pay them so that they can do a curse on God's people. Hey, you are blessed beyond measure and no curse can come against you unless there's an open door. Amen. And you're not going to open any door. Amen. What was the door that they were trying to open in Nehemiah's life but fear? Intimidation is just another name for fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind, right? So we know that it doesn't come from the, the Lord, this intimidation, which is really nothing other than fear, right? Because God doesn't give us that fear, that intimidation, right? The righteous are as bold as a lion. He gives you the boldness of the Lord. He gives you the sensitivity. But they were trying to send a curse to Nehemiah. They're like, listen, we can't, we can't seem to destroy this guy. 
No matter what we do, he keeps on going on. He keeps, the wall is built. The gates are just about ready. But they're just about set. If, they, if we allow those gates to be put in place, then we're done. We're, we're literally on the other side. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so what do they do? They have to hire somebody to hope to get Nehemiah to sin because he was focused. He was focused. He said, I'm not coming down this but I'm not going to, oh, no, I'm not going to the land of, oh, no. Oh, no, this is a trick, and I know it. They tried everything they could. The enemy tries everything he can to try to come against us. But we have the wisdom of God, and we are continually growing in the wisdom of God that we will not, we will not take the bait of the enemy. Those are five tactics just in this book of Nehemiah that are still being used against God's children. The final one, he was trying to send a curse. The spirit of intimidation, the hired person to send this spirit of intimidation to try to bring a curse. Because if Nehemiah would have gotten afraid and allowed that fear to settle in, fear is not of God. Right? We have to kick fear out the moment that you feel it. I'm not saying you're never going to feel fear. You just can't allow it to remain. The minute that you recognize it, you got to kick it out. you got to cast it out and say, oh, no, that's not coming from me. There cannot be tolerance for it because it has an assignment. And the assignment is literally, in this case, they were trying to send a curse. Well, see, if he takes that bait. You see, if he takes the spirit of intimidation, then, then, there, then he's going to walk in fear. Then we actually have an access point because he won't be walking in the mind of Christ, even if it's for that moment, even if it's for that second. And so we know this. We know this. And so we need to make sure that we're always walking in this understanding, this fully in this understanding that God has not given us a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1.7 but of power, of love, right, and a sound mind, which means a self-disciplined mind. Our mind is, should be and can be self-disciplined, and it takes work, but it's worth it, right? So finally, not only was the wall built, not only were the gates put in, but in 52 days, you guys, that's not a very long time. That is not a very long time. 52 days, the walls, they were completed. The, the enemies were disheartened because in their own eyes, they saw it. And they said, this can be nothing other than the hand of God. And some of you have been in a long battle. And it maybe it was been, it's longer than 52 days. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Because you keep your hand to the plow and you don't look back. You are not going to be like Lot's wife. You're going to keep your hand to the plow. You're not looking back. You're like, ah, oh, it's better before. No, it wasn't. Stop walking as if you have amnesia. It was not better before. Better is now and better is also ahead of you, not before. Yes. Amen. So in 52 days, they were able to restore though they had all kinds of tactics that were working against them. They were able to restore this work, and even their enemies said, wow, this had to have been the hand of God. The wall was built, the doors were hung, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Levites, they were all appointed, and they were all stationed. This is exactly what we have been doing. And then in, in Nehemiah 8:10. because then the Ezra the priest came, and he opened the book of the law, and he began reading it out loud. And he said, this day is holy. This is, this is a holy day. Don't mourn. Don't weep. Right? They heard the words of the law. They heard the, they heard the, 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 they heard the words of the law. Chapter 8, 10. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do not sorrow. Isn't that a beautiful promise? We're not going to sorrow because the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So you are not going to be destroyed, church, for a lack of knowledge. Amen. You will not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I know the word says my people will be destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but you won't be destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have knowledge in the word. And it's growing all the time. Yes. You will not be destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. For by the spirit of God, these tactics have been exposed. They've been identified. And if they're identified, then we become empowered, right? And we're able to destroy them. We're able to 
kick them out. So mockery and ridicule and lies and plotting and confusion, distractions and delays and accusations and slander and name calling. Right now, we cast that out right now. I cast out that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I cast it out wherever it is right now. I decree it goes right now, up and out, up and out. You know that demons, they're just having their way right now, I command that demon to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command it to leave you right now. Just come out of agreement with anything you need to. Intimidation has to go right now. All the works of the devil has to go right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to go. And every place goes right now. Out. So as we have taken authority over these demonic spirits, right, we're rebuilding the walls. We're rebuilding the walls. We're setting those gates of protection and prosperity and provision for your families. That's what we're doing. It's exactly what we're doing. So last couple of scriptures here. Proverbs 21.30 says, there's no wisdom, there's no insight, and there's no plan that will succeed against the plan of the Lord, church. Amen. There is absolutely no wisdom. There's no wisdom above God's wisdom. Right? So there's no wisdom that's going to be allowed to succeed against the Lord, nor is there any insight, and there's no plan. It's the plan of the Lord that's going to stand. Right? Amen. Isaiah 14, 24, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I have purposed, it shall stand. The will of the Lord will stand. And you are standing with the will of the Lord. You are hearing. Faith comes by hearing. He faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So even though some of you may hear something, again, good, because you need to hear it, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And he In other words, the more you hear of the word of God, the more you're going to hear it, the more it's going to get on the inside of you, the more that you're going to be changed by it. You become awakened to what was already there because the word is alive, right? And so for some of you, you saw these some five demonic tactics from the book of Nehemiah and how these same tactics are still applied today and still are used today, but not on my watch and not on your watch because you're wiser for it. Now you're going to be discerning. You're going to be aware. When you see this tactic, you're going to be like, oh, that's one of those demonic tactics and it's not going to work on me ever again. Or you might see it in operation in somebody else and you can say, oh no, that's a demonic tactic and we cancel it right now. We cancel that confusion. We cancel that intimidation. We cancel it's distraction. You stay focused on what God told you to do. That's a spirit of distraction. Try to rob from you. Don't let it. Don't let it, right? Amen? We are to be the hands and feet of Jesus, and we're to help one another. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So it's a lying spirit. So it's an accusatory spirit. You know the truth. So what if it's calling names and slandering you? You know the truth, and so does the Lord. And God is the one that protects your reputation anyways. So the plan of the Lord will stand. Now fight. Fight. The good fight of faith, church of God. Fight the good fight of faith and stand firm and know that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. 